And in today's fast-paced world between work, the kids, and the daily chores, it can feel like you barely have time to breathe these days. But now there is help in her new book, 168 Hours. You have more time than you think. Laura Vanderkam offers a new time management system to make the most out of your week. Laura, good morning. Thank you for having me. And you say when it comes to time management, you say it's more important to focus on the 168 hours during the week rather than what you get done during a day. Why? Well, in a given day, you might not achieve the right balance. I mean, you might have to stay late at work, you might get to work late because the kids miss the bus, you might not have time to exercise, but in the whole of 168 hours, you can probably find enough time to focus on the things that matter. Yeah, the things that matter, you say, uh, you actually interviewed over 100 very successful men and women, and you asked them to keep a time log of the things that they were able to accomplish in a 168-hour in a work week. What did you find? What were some of the interesting results? Well, basically, they focus on the three things that they do best. This is nurturing their careers, nurturing their families and their close friends, mm -hmm. and nurturing themselves. And by this, I mean getting enough sleep, exercising, focusing on personal passions like volunteering. Uh, and as much as possible, they try not to be busy with other things. They ignore, minimize, or outsource everything else. And that's one of the key points you make. It really is about the prioritizing and ignoring, minimizing, outsourcing, which doesn't mean ignoring the, the bigger things, like no, the kids and the time at home. Yeah, no, right? you don't ignore the kids, and you right. don't ignore the most important important things at work, but probably you can spend a little less time on housework, for instance, mm -hmm. maybe spend a little less time on email, a little bit less time running around in the car. Yeah, in fact, you make the point that, you know, we do have a lot more time than we think, that when you take a look at your time log at the end of the day, and you, you yourself kept track of your time, that you realize we do spend so much time wasting away on emails and, and doing the laundry and little things that you could well, get better use on. Even utilize. if you look, I mean, if you look at the hours, with 168 hours in a week, even if you're working 40 and sleeping eight hours a night, so that's 56 a week, mm -hmm. that leaves 72 hours for other things. If you're working 50 hours, that still leaves 62 hours for other things. So probably you can find time to exercise in that and to really play with your kids and do some other things as well. Okay, and then, so you, the practical advice this morning is first for people to keep track of the time and create their own time log. You actually have a website that you've created that yes. they can download that. Uh, my168hours.com, my168hours.com. Uh, you can download a time management spreadsheet. Just log your time for one week. You don't have to do this for the rest of your life. Don't get crazy here. Don't get crazy. <laughs> um, but think of yourself as a lawyer billing your time and right. keep track of what you're doing as often as you remember for a week. It's like a food journal. And, and the purpose of that really is to see how you could be more efficient, right? Yeah. Well, if you want to lose weight, you write down what you're eating so you don't eat mindlessly. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing with time. Uh, you know, you write down what you're doing as often as you remember, and that keeps you from wasting time mindlessly on things that don't actually matter to you. Right, exactly. And the point you make next is to find the time to make it happen. The things that you like to be doing is the next point. And then you also say to substitute your language and, and change, I don't have the time, to it's not a priority. And often that's a more accurate way to put it. I mean, I could tell you I don't have time to sew Halloween costumes for my kids. That's not true. I have time if you offered to pay me, for instance. Um, but since that's not going to happen, I can say it's not a priority. But it's a little harder mm -hmm. to say that for things like, I'm not going to read to you, sweetie, because it's not a priority. I'm not going to play with you because right. it's not a priority. And if you find yourself choking on those words, then maybe it's time to re-examine how you're spending your 168 hours. Very good point. So we'll leave it there with that. It, it's a great read. I've been reading it. I'm spending a couple of hours of my 168 hours reading it. So thank you so much, Laura Vanderkam. Thank, thank you. you for having it me. It reminds us to keep us life and perspective and the priorities we have. Coming up next.